friends, staff, and fellow students. Welcome to this graduation letter due for the Year 12 class of 1994, and thank you for being here to share this occasion with us. As we gather together this morning, let us place ourselves in the presence of our God, who is the source of all hope in our life journey. In a very special way, this is a morning of recollection and thanks. We are mindful of all the people who have watched us grow over the years, some from a distance, some by name, some by heart. Our debt of thanks to these people, so very close to us, can never be repaid. We are mindful especially of our families, who probably will never know how well they have defined tenderness, care, and love for us. They have shown patience. They have stood by and encouraged us. They have fought with us, corrected us, and finally given us a most precious gift, the respect to choose for ourselves. We are mindful of all the people who believed in us when we hardly believed in ourselves. We are thankful of the many people in each of our lives who have in so many different ways been our <coughs> companions over the past years of our life journey. We hope that they will continue to be there as we journey beyond our school years. Our theme today, A Time to Fly, reflects this time in our lives as we leave our college and go out into the world. However, we go out with the confidence that we have been and will continue to be sustained <coughs> and empowered by the love we have experienced in so many different ways, which is echoed in our opening song. Let us now stand together and sing our opening song. In the class of 1994. On the 6th of May 1954, Britain's Roger Bannister was the first person to run a mile in under four minutes. He took three minutes 59.4 seconds to run the distance. Up until Bannister's run, it had been universally accepted that a sub four minute mile was a physical impossibility for all humans. <coughs> all sorts of authoritative explanations had been offered to justify man's inability to smash the four minute barrier. Wind resistance too great, human bone structure too small, lung capacity insufficient. Yet within one month of Bannister's run, Australia's John Landy clocked 3 minutes 58 seconds for the distance. Within 12 months, 37 other runners had broken the four minute barrier. And within two years, a total of 300 runners across the world had run under four minutes. All of which goes to show the wisdom of Henry Ford's immortal words. If you think you can, or you think you can't, you're absolutely right. Metaphorically speaking, I wonder how many of you, our seniors, have run the appropriate sub four minute mile in your achievements to date. I wonder how many of you haven't, simply because you did not believe you could do it. What is more to the point today is how often you will achieve it in the next 20 years of your life. Whether you do, or whether you don't, will be determined by the way each of you thinks about yourself, and what you think about life's reality around you. God has given all of you a brain and a mind which is truly awesome. It is made up of more than 10 billion nerve cells called neurons, and each of these neurons has 10,000 connections with other nerve cells. The number of possible combinations this network can perform is a number so large that it would take an entire human lifetime just to write it down. Your brain's potential is known only to God. The power of the human mind to achieve anything in life, despite the obstacles, even apparently insurmountable obstacles, has been well documented this century. William James said, the greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter themselves by altering their attitudes of mind. Many sports people and other great achievers in culture, 
in society, in academic areas and in leadership across the world have long recognised the power of our thoughts in converting the possibles in our lives into realities. Olympic gold medalist Linus Nunn is convinced that the mind plays a much bigger part in our achievements than most people recognise. She discovered this in the Los Angeles Olympic Games. Two days before she complete, uh, competed in LA, she dreamed that she ran 13.01 seconds. The following day, as she was warming up, everyone kept asking how she was feeling and what time did she want to run. She kept telling everyone 13.01 seconds. As we all know now, she won the race brilliantly. When she crossed the line and looked up at the time clock, there in blazing numerals for all the world to see was the time, 13.01 seconds. She now believes that the mind has a kind of willpower that drives you towards what you want to achieve. The trick, though, is to know what you want to achieve, the setting of goals in your life, and then to use the power of your self-talk in your mind and then with a spirit of persistence and determination to go out and achieve those goals. The Holy Spirit working quietly through your mind and spirit will help you to discern your true path. When God is included in the equation as well, success is assured. If that is what God's will is for you, if it is not part of his plan for you at that time, he will lead you down another path to another goal. However, it may only be with the wisdom of lived years of experience that you will come to see that in fact it was the best option for you at that time. I believe that Noel Whittaker's new book for older teenagers, 16 to 20, called Getting It Together, should be read by all people before they leave school or very soon after. Ideas come to us, either through influential books or through the wisdom of someone we respect, can be powerful forces for change in us, if we but have an open mind. This small readable book has 26 chapters, and the first 16 talk about you, your potential, the power of your self-talk, your self-image, your attitude, your perspective of failure, as a stepping tone to success. You're wanting to reap the harvest before you have sown the seeds and put in the hours. And the important strategy of reframing your attitude to put you in touch with the power of your mind. The other chapters, incidentally, might give you some thoughts on money management at your stage of life, which will help you to achieve peace of mind further down the track. But what about you? Each one of you is totally unique. Bring forth to overflow with goodness, beauty, and potential. In his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey quotes Oliver Holmes as saying, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Reach into yourself. Believe in yourself. In your goodness. In your beauty and inner strength. And in your potential. If you reframe your attitudes and life perspective according to those positive beliefs, the world will be a different place for you. You will be like the young birds taken to the cliff face by their mother for their first flight. She says to them, Come to the edge. They say, we might fall. She says, come to them. Come to the edge. They say, it is too high. She says to them, come to the edge. They came to the edge and she pushed them and they flew. If you believe in God, in yourself, in your parents, and in your true friends, you will not need to be pushed. You will not want to be pushed. Despite some anxiety, you will fly. You will fly to a great height. And from there, you will see all the wonderful possible things for you. 
and your life will never be the same again. Your greatest friends in life will be your parents, or your mum and dad if you're in a one-parent family. No, one, no matter what happens to you, for good or ill, no matter what you do, whether at times it's success or at other times failure, they will be there for you. They have not walked with you to this point in your life, and neither has God, just to slip away now and let you face life totally on your own. Try to really listen to any advice they may give you as you move toward adulthood. They've been there and they've done that. If they had that part of their lives to live again, they would probably have done some things differently. Those are the ones you need to talk to them about. Because they are the pearls of wisdom which come only from life's experiences of someone that you trust and you love. Some of this wisdom, if you let it touch you, may save you a lot of pain, remorse and frustration as you go through life. Remember your teachings. Let the negatives go through the keeper. People who dwell on negatives will always be losers. Rejoice in the happy memories, the times when you touch their lives or they yours. Remember the unforgettable stories that you will embellish over the years as you meet and retell them to each other. Your paths have crossed, and you and they are the better for the experience. A sincere goodbye to those parents who will have no children at Clairvaux McKillop in 1995 and beyond. One family finishing today started here in 1974. Some other families started later in the 70s. And to all those families who leave this community for the last time, thank you very much for whatever you have done to assist us while you have been part of our school community. We hope you will have fond memories of the place and we pray for the welfare of your family in the years ahead. For the class of 94, we bid you a fond farewell. We are proud of you, and we are privileged to have been a part of your lives for the times that you have been here. Your time to go has come, as it has come for so many before you. We look forward to your friendship and loyalty during the years ahead. We thank you for your contribution to this college during your time. And we should also tell you that your leading of the school community in the school song on the night of the closing mass was the best yet and will take some beating by the classes who come after you. Well done and thank you. May Christ Jesus, his mother Mary and Mary McKillop go with you. May the Spirit be a gentle and softening influence in your life. May God support you and all of us here, as we move confidently toward tomorrow and the other tomorrows of our lives. And may true peace reign in the lives of all of us. Amen.
would affect our career goals, as many of us are discovering now. Grade 11, on full swing at last. There were the lectures of how this was not compulsory schooling, and how these two years would affect us for the rest of our life and so forth. It was hard reality, but the truth was that it was going to be a huge two years. Finally, there was a light, and we could focus on what we could focus on what direction we chose to take. The workload increased, but didn't seem to interfere with our social lives. The year was a busy one with the production of the boyfriend, being a major highlight, but it could not compare with the event Year 11 is recognised for, the semi-formal. Finally, 1994, seeing is at last. As I look back over the past year, I recall many events that affected us as a group. Our winter school sport competitions, especially the swimming, where Grade 12 came together as a year and chewed on the swimming stars of the school. And we cannot forget Carlos, who made quite an impression to the other schools, as our school mascot, the monkey. <laughs> the school dances are stress reliever. A chance to get together as a group socially, they were always a great success. For those interested in theatre and fine food, we, have, we, have, we held a theatre restaurant, which is very enjoyable, and which many families of the community attended. Now, the dreaded three letters, QCS. We cannot forget the long preparation and stress that many of us here went through. A quick thank you to all the teachers and parents who helped us through our testing, especially to Mr. Dar for all your efforts in preparing us for it and helping us understand just how important it was. The highlight of this year was no doubt the formal. The guys looked absolutely fabulous, most of them unrecognisable. <laughs> the girls, of course, looked stunning. We all had a memorable evening. This brings us to today, November 18th, 1994. We've all come a long way since 1990. Today marks a new beginning. We leave Clever McKillop College to move into a new direction. There is no doubt the envelope which will arrive in a few weeks holds a number and in some way will determine our careers. If you are fortunate enough to attain your magic number and do the course you'd like to do, I wish you good luck. Today, there are so many options. Don't allow a number to make you less than what you can be. Take up the challenge. When one door shuts, another will squeak open. You just have to push hard enough. In conclusion, I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of all students here today to thank the mums, the dads, sisters and brothers for all their love and support throughout our lives. To our teachers who have put up with us for so long and given us encouragement along the way, we don't often say thank you enough. But I can assure you, you have our respect and gratitude Without you, we would not be here today. To Mr. Condon, Mr. Disney, Mrs. Keaton, Mr. Dark, and all the administration, we thank you for your support, understanding, and advice. Sometimes it may seem a thankless job, but looking at us today, we are worth the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, while I'm up here and in control of the microphones, I'm going to do a tank hook, but with a little bit of an exception. I'm not going to mention all my friends personally, because they all know how important they are to me. But if I look out of all of you here today, <laughs> I see 216 of the best friends that I have made. Today, as we walk out of Clover McKillop for the last time, let us only take the memories that we wish to remember. Let us not feel the pain of losing friends at the start of a new beginning. I wish you all good luck, and may I come and bond to be a student at this school Make us proud to be the graduating class of Clover and McKillop College 1994. Mr. Condon and teachers and all you staff students, I would like to say something about the unit. We all of you remember Mrs. Gordon, who used to teach us. She was always very helpful to us. I met her three years ago at school when I started here in year nine in nineteen ninety one. She was kind to us and beautiful to us in all of you. Yes, you are.
me good all the time and tell me what to do, what so I could do a better person and do something to bring me in your life. She was really close to the special unit teachers and then we are all good friends. When she was alive, she cared so much for all the students that she wants a wheelchair program for 994. I know she remembers us and we miss her too and she will always be special to us all. We helped her all the time when she needed our help. We think of her all the time and we have a special song called Hero which reminds us of her. Lord, we ask for your special blessings on our parents and friends who have supported us throughout our school life. Take care of each one of us and our families as we journey beyond school. Lord, hear us. Lord, help us to be aware always of the gifts you have given us. Help us to discover what you are calling us to do with our lives so that we may use to the full these gifts in your service. Lord, hear us. Lord, let us see the meaning of life in the experiences we have, the people we meet, the activities we engage in, the deeds we do, and the problems we face. Help us to rise above ourselves, grow beyond ourselves, and change. Lord, hear us. Lord, we thank you for our many teachers, both in primary and high schools. They have shared their knowledge and wisdom with us. But that most of all, they have shared much of themselves with us, and they would see that our every blessing and guidance will hear us. Lord, we thank you for many wonderful friendships we have made. We pray that we will always be able to accept each other as friends and be there to support each other in our needs. Lord, we pray for the senior class of 1994. We pray that they may grow in love throughout their lives. May the experiences they have had at Clever and Killer College be a source of encouragement and enrichment in the years ahead. Lord, 